Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord, second edition. I'm going to showcase for you Adobe software alternatives that are either 100% free or can be purchased outright that will not only fulfill your creative needs, but can also save you up to $636 per year. And that's a lot of damn money. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Joseph Christina. I'm a director of photography, a product inventor, a photographer, as well as, of course, a content creator, as you see here on YouTube. About two years ago, I cut the cord with Adobe, and I took you guys on the journey with me of deleting Adobe software from all of the many computers in my studio, and then moving all of that production to alternatives that were either free or could be purchased outright and upgraded if so desired. So once again, this series focuses on software that does not force you into a rental model, a lease model, a pay in perpetuity model of software. I don't test any of that and ultimately I don't use any of it. If you would like to see any of the numerous pieces of Adobe alternative software that I have tested a couple of years back in the original Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord series, edition one, I put together a playlist. Take a look at it. You can find it below in the comments or in the description. Description. So what is going to be covered in this series? Well, basically all of Adobe CC. That means Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, as well as InDesign, Audition. I'm going to provide to you alternatives, once again, that are either free or that you can purchase. Now, back when I started this series, many students told me that they were forced to use Adobe software while they were in university. The partnership between you and in Adobe Creative Cloud has provided licenses for every single student. And when they came out and were trying to find their first job, they didn't have a lot of money to pay for an Adobe CC subscription that would set them back over $600 per year. And they wanted advice. Now this holds true with many artists and designers and photographers and videographers and just about all creatives in general today. The milk and honey that was flowing freely back in the 90s and 2000s is just simply no longer. In comes Photopea to the rescue. In today's video, I'm going to introduce this Adobe Photoshop alternative and during the course of this series, I will discuss and review many others. Photopea is a completely free Photoshop clone that was created in 2013 and does just about everything that Photoshop CS5 and CS6 did. Now keep in mind, a 10 year old copy of Photoshop would be able to do or handle 90% of everything that the majority of creatives like you and me needed to do. And this holds true with Photopea. While the software is free, there is a column on the right hand side that has rotating ads. This can be removed with a small stipend, but I'll cover that towards the end of this video. So unlike many other Adobe Photoshop alternatives, Photopea works on any platform. It doesn't matter if it's a PC, a Macintosh, a Linux machine, or even a tablet. The reason is Photopea is not a piece of software that you install. Photopea runs in your web browser. It is a web web application. After testing out the software thoroughly, I found that the majority of keyboard shortcuts as well as the user interface and all of the menus are nearly identical to Adobe Photoshop. So using Photopea as an alternative to Photoshop is an extremely easy transition. Making this even more enticing is the fact that Photopea can read and write Adobe Photoshop files. That's right. You don't lose anything. You can bring in your TIFF files or those PSDs. Photopea has many of the tools that the majority of us use regularly. Adjustment layers, spot healing, clone stamp, dodge and burn, all of those basic tools, as well as, as of last year, Photopea has brought in content aware move, as well as content aware scaling. That is some pretty powerful stuff for a web-based alternative to Photoshop. Now I'm sure a lot of you are asking, could I use Photopea for my projects and cut the cord with Adobe? Is this a viable option? And how is this legal to make a complete Adobe Photoshop clone without getting sued? 90% of all photographers could use Photopea for their day-to-day -day work, no matter what. 
I've used it, it works perfectly, and most likely for you, it will work also. Now, in regards to legalities here, the answer is kind of simple. According to the sole developer, yes, there's only one guy that made PhotoP. The legal issues are really moot because all of the algorithms used in the different tools in this software were programmed by him from scratch. Nothing was stolen or reverse engineered. He wrote the software. Now, Ivan Kusker, who is the sole developer, said that he put over 7,000 hours into developing PhotoP. And once again, rewriting everything under the hood, as well as the GUI, the graphical user interface. It's all his work. Now, that sounds like a ton of work, right? But if we think about this logically, this is one guy, 7,000 hours. Now, 7,000 hours sounds like a lot of time, but let's think of it this way. He's programmed this entire package in those 7,000 hours all by himself in comparison to the hordes of Adobe programmers that have been working on Photoshop for the last decade or two decades. And they really haven't got that much further than what he has. What Ivan has done here with PhotoP is nothing less than remarkable in my personal opinion, but it also demonstrates the lack of drive for innovation in comparison to iteration by Adobe. Since everything that they've been doing ever since coming out with the Adobe CC model has been iteration. Why is this the case? Basically, Adobe receives billions and billions of dollars a year from us customers. And it doesn't matter if they do something new or if they just simply do a bug fix, they're still going to receive the exact same amount of money. Whereas in the past, what would happen was Adobe would have to sell you on their upgrade. So if you were using the Adobe Suite 5.0 and they wanted you to buy 5.5 and do that upgrade, they would have to give you incentive for doing so. And to do that, they would have to innovate, put something new in there to entice you to move on to the new package and put that money into their hands. They don't have to do that anymore. Now it's simply iterative. Iteration upon iteration, bug fixes, and that's about it. Nothing really new with all of those billions and billions of dollars. Once again, 7,000 hours for one guy compared to decades for an entire team. Now keep in mind, even though PhotoP feels like it's a piece of software that's sitting on your computer or tablet, it's not. What does this mean? This means that you might have some responsiveness issues and it really depends solely on your internet connection. What is your internet speed? If you have a really good internet connection and you can upload say a 500 meg file to PhotoP and it only takes a few moments, you're probably gonna have a really good experience. On the other hand, if you have DSL and you have a six meg connection and it'll take you a half an hour to upload that same 500 meg file, your experience is not gonna be so good. So your internet connection is very important when using this type of software. The good news is once those large files are uploaded to PhotoP, they edit flawlessly. It doesn't matter if they're a 500 meg file or a gigabyte file, they're very easy to edit. Now I also found some lag when doing heavy processing of images using Content-Aware Move or Content-Aware Scaling and any type of computational heavy processing because you're doing a lot of algorithmic equations behind the scene and that takes a lot of processing power and it is slower to do. Doesn't matter if it's in the cloud or if it's on your computer. Now, interestingly enough, on the other hand, PhotoP could also level the playing field. How so? Well, if you're working on a terminal or an extremely slow computer with a fast internet connection, well, PhotoP could actually be faster than using software on your computer itself. In the end, if you want a 100% free alternative to Adobe Photoshop and you're ready to cut the cord, PhotoP.com is probably one of the best web-based photo editors that I've found. Now back to those ads that we see on the right-hand side. If you want to remove those ads and you wish to help out the creator, Ivan, you can give a small stipend of $39.96 for the entire year, 40 bucks for the entire year. And it will not only remove those ads, you'll also help him out the creator. And one other thing that happens is you now have the ability to go backwards in your history further. So instead of having, let's say 20 steps back, maybe you have 40 or 50. It extends the amount of mistakes that you can make and undo them. I hope this video has got you thinking about Adobe alternatives and possibly saving that $636 a year by getting into alternatives. Check out that playlist, Life After Adobe Cutting the Cord. Once again, the first version as well as now the second, second edition will all go into that same playlist. Go in there and start binge watching. There 
there's a lot of great evergreen information there. Now in my next video, I'm gonna show you how I make thumbnails for this channel using Photopea. And then in a follow-up video, I'm gonna share with you a secret to removing a subject from a background and how to get professional results using Photopea. If you find this content helpful, subscribe, like, hit this bell notification button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. And don't forget to check out my website over at jchristina.com where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. And for getting to the end of this video, use promo code YT20 at checkout. Once again, promo code YT20 at checkout, and you'll get 20% off everything in your shopping cart. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe and stay healthy.